right, my name is Robert LeCount. I've been with the Rich Dad Company for about 16 years. Robert Kiyosaki has been gracious enough to allow me and a friend of mine and a group of friends of mine that are crypto investors to chat with his community about just all things that are cryptoverse. So we have named our show Rich Dad Cryptoverse. This is my friend, Jim. Jim is an exceptional GameFi NFT investor. He's been doing it for years. I love talking to him because it's a space I don't understand very well. So Jim, welcome to the show. Hey, Rob, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be on here. Super excited to help educate the audience and bring more attention to this nascent space, the you know, NFTs and you know, metaverse, GameFi. And what's so interesting to me, man, is that like, I think anybody, everybody, like at some point, whether, you know, on social media, TV, the workplace, they've heard that, you know, they've heard the word NFT, right? I would think. It's, it's got to be like one of the more popular words being used today. It's funny that you, yeah, and saying it's popular. I mean, and uh, in fact, Collins Dictionary, they chose NFT as their word of the year for 2021. So I thought that, that was incredible. fascinating too. Incredible. And, and actually the number two word was crypto itself. So it just goes to show you uh, where we are at uh, in this web 3.0 technological revolution that is taking place. And again, it's super early, but just back to NFTs uh, in the past year, right? So in 2021, uh, in this, again, this young space, total 24.9 billion last year. That was the revenue of just on NFTs. And that's an increase over 24 billion from 2020, where you only saw about 900 million. Uh, in sales. So that, that's incredible. Yeah, the exponential uh, explosive growth and the proliferation of projects that are hitting the market. It's really exciting. It's a great time to be in the space. Yeah, and it's, you know, and it's sort of uh, converging with the distrust and traditional, you know, monetary mechanism. So it's, it's, it's an interesting time right now. Yeah, I love that you brought that up too, because I, I think to understand the future, you have to understand the past, right? So for me to understand where we came from, in web 1.0 and the static, you know, the static internet, that information was pretty much just loaded on there. And you could, you know, read and voraciously read stuff, but you really couldn't interact. And then web 2.0, that was early 90s, right? And then you get to like 2004, you know, and web 2.0, and it's much more participatory. And you have social media, and you have, you know, Twitter and Facebook, and, you know, every, you could interact and there's blogs and whatever. But now you're seeing Web 3.0, and I think one of the biggest factors of it, some people just define it as crypto, and I think that's a fallacy. Web 3.0 is, is about decentralization. And that's the beauty of this as people look at centralized, you know, whether it's centralized finance or across the board, and people are looking for something that is more decentralized and giving power back to the people that there's not this central entity that is really controlling things and manipulating things. So that's, that's to, to me is what is really exciting about where we are. Yeah. I mean, it, it is amazing. Like the decentralized aspect, and I don't want to get too far down any rabbit. Yeah. Hole, sure. We could always digress. Yeah, be, sure, but I mean, just an amazing thing, like over this last summer, our uh, nearby city of ours ran a test uh, of running their voting through a blockchain mechanism and it, it went perfectly. It was flawless. It was, yeah. it was great. So, I mean, that, it's, it's going to be implemented everywhere eventually. We, we didn't have any problems, right, in the last election or previous elections uh, with voting? No, no not I at doubt all. it. No, I mean, it seems <laughs> completely like on the up and up. <laughs> so it's great, man. That, that'll be something that's wonderful to incorporate. I guess there'll have to be one centralized location or database, I should say, uh, in order for that to come to fruition. But yeah, uh, using blockchain technology that everyone you know, would, would have a number of set, you know, data would be uh, tethered to the, each individual and it would really be virtually impossible for corruption or we, we'd be able to tally the votes up, hopefully yeah. in a manner, a manner in which both sides would be happy. Both sides. Yeah, happy. yeah it's incredible because each voter gets a yeah. copy of the blockchain for themselves. Let's get into like, since NFT was the most popular word of the year last year, like what is an right. NFT? Honestly, I like just at its yeah. base or they're so right. complicated. Yeah. So if I just said to you, like, you ever like you get in a conversation with someone and then they ask and they know that, you know, if I, I for me personally, and people are like, hey, what's an NFT? And I'm like, it's a non-fungible token. Conversation's over, right? You're good. People are like, they have like a glazed look on their face. They're totally perplexed. 
they like a quizzical look like what are you talking about so yeah it's a non-fungible token but that doesn't really help anything so to really distill it and break it down non-fungible just means like non-replaceable right so an nft in its simplest form is that it's a unique uh unit of data that is employing technology that allows digital content and that could be in the form of a myriad of things i'm talking about videos songs photos and those things can be logged and authenticated on cryptocurrency blockchains uh and you know that's that's to me what's so fascinating so and i should probably say this too you know nfts see in that being non-fungible right they can't be exchanged for an identical item so if we look at something in the real world maybe somebody is totally new to the space right they're jumping in like cash for example is a fungible asset right Absolutely. each dollar may be unique but the part you're right but the particular dollar you have doesn't matter yeah. but if i take like 10 a 10 dollar bill and i trade it for five you know five dollar ones right i still have 10 bucks but if I trade the $10 for say an autographed baseball card, right? Then uh, I have a non-fungible item, it's unique. And while it may have monetary value, uh, it isn't itself really a trade commodity, right? So you're looking at an NFT as something that is non-fungible, it is totally unique. And on the blockchain, you can see that. And you know it has that, the data that is imbued in it that everyone can see, that everyone can follow. It's totally transparent. And that's the beauty of the blockchain too. It's immutable. You can't alter it. And uh, that's what, uh, just another reason to be so excited uh, about this space. Agreed. That is awesome. I, I you know what, I, on, truth be told, I've got a couple of NFTs, even without knowing what they are. And I don't recommend right. anybody does that. But like I had a little <laughs> bit of FOMO and I was like, oh, I want to get some right. of these just to go through the experience because that's how I learn anyways. And when yeah. I was going through it, there was this process. And it was called minting. Right. And I sort of understand it. It's a good question. But like I'm yeah. still sort of like confused by like. I have to pay a fee and then you're going to mint it. What's that minting mechanism? That's good. That's a good question. And I know a lot of people get confused by that. And I, I, I do get asked this. So typically like creators, uh, or if you prefer, maybe artists, they will, what we say, mint their work on an NFT marketplace. And think of like, think of like an eBay where people go on there and you can buy and sell and do whatever. Well, for NFTs, we have marketplaces. Like the biggest one is OpenSea. Uh, you know, super rare is another one, rareable. There are other places. So really minting, though, is the act of creating an NFT, which means creating what is called a smart contract that will be stored on the blockchain. And the smart contract, it, it contains like just really important information. So it'll list like the creator of the work. Uh, it'll ensure that the creator or other parties receive royalties each time the NFT is sold. So really, in essence, smart contracts are just really simply programs that are stored on a blockchain uh, that run when predetermined conditions are met. Uh, and they typically are used to automate the execution of an agreement just so that all participants can be immediately certain of the outcome. You know, and you don't have any intermediaries. They're, they're not involved or, or time loss. Everything is right there for everyone to see. And that, again, makes the blockchain so beautiful and why it was developed some years ago because of how transparent and how immutable it is, trustless it is. So it's just, it's a wonderful thing when, and yeah, and, and, and I know you mint that first NFT and you, you know, you're know you there and you get it and it goes in your wallet. And these are conversations. I don't want to get too technical and too detailed, but we can down the road, make it really educational and show people even, you know, and how to do those things. And how to jump into the space. A lot of people are apprehensive. And, and I think we as human beings are just that way. We're uh, afraid of change sometimes and afraid to jump in and maybe take some risks. You know, I know for me, you know, this is one of the best risks uh, I've ever taken in, in my life. And uh, it would have been play, right. It would have been playing it safe to not yeah. jump into the space and yeah. to really try it and see the future for what it is and where we're headed uh, is 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 incredible. It is awesome. You know, it's funny as well. You were, you were talking about that. Now I completely get it because like I, I'm a visual person. So I like yeah. envisioned a similar process in the real world right now. And the first thing I thought of was uh, automobile makers and VIN numbers, right? Like Absolutely. a VIN number is like being registered in this national database 
of this vehicle could be sold in any state. Everybody knows what color it is, make, model, year, all that stuff based on his VIN number. It's sort of like the same thing. Like you have this item that is registered on a blockchain. Is that accurate? Yeah, it is. And, you know, I, I, I hope it's okay if I go here now, but I think there's a... Um, there's another misconception that's out there. And a lot of people look at NFTs and they think that they're just these profile pictures and the, you know, pictures of apes and cats and dogs and whatever other animals or what else is out there. And people go, really? That's what, that's what NFTs really are. And I want to say, no, NFTs are so much bigger. They're so much broader. They're so much more robust what we're going to see in the future. And this is my assertion in the not so distant future, we're going to see record labels. And I just wrote an article on this. We're going to see record labels fund the release of new music instead of like the current way that, you know, the, the money an artist needs to bring their music to the masses. It's not going to come through all these, you know, intermediaries, these, you know, the agent and the record label. It's now going to come in the form of like crowdfunding where they can sell their NFTs and give a percentage of their royalties to the, to the people that love them, their fans. You know, and, and even bigger in a few years, like there won't be a ticket for a concert or a sporting event that utilizes like a, a QR code or a physical piece of paper. Instead, they're going to be rendered useless because there's going to be no incentive for, the, for an artist or an organization to launch them as anything but an NFT. Can I use That's a sports? And, yeah, I, like, I'm a huge Matrix lover. I think I brought oh, this same up here. here. In same December, here, they were doing this yeah. uh, NFT where you could get in. And your NFT was your ticket to a pre-release to see the Matrix. Like a perfect example of that. They just, yeah, I, I think it was November, December, they did this. So that is so yeah. cool. So you're telling me, you're telling me I can't just go on the open sea or whatever, and right click those and just save it and it's mine. That's really good. That's another really good point because the beauty of the blockchain is, and somebody, somebody technically could do that, right? You could just right click and save. And, you know, people say that to me, why am I going to buy? a digital art piece that I could essentially just, you know, right click and save, you know? Uh, so uh, why are they spending so much on crypto punks or these bored apes? But I want to say, no, there's full transparency on the blockchain just because you have a picture of it. We can go to the blockchain and we can always verify where uh, that item was sold, who owns it, how much it was sold for. And that's for perpetuity. That doesn't go away. And that's the beauty, again, of it being totally immutable. And I love it as it's decentralized and across networks, across countries. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what your zip code is. It doesn't matter what your gender is, that you can follow this. And, and, and that's what makes this really great. And it keeps the world really connected, uh, this transparency. And, you know, and if I could just if I could just go back to her for a little bit, because I get really excited about this. Even like, you know, going back to, I wanted to use like even a sports analogy. So Tom Brady, the GOAT, right, is retiring from football. So if you like, you know, I was supposed to go to that game last week too. I've not to digress. I have a brother that has a season ticket to the Bucks, and I'm an oh. idiot for not going, but whatever. Man. So if he, threw, if he threw six touchdowns in that last game or whatever the last game of his career is, man, you know, it, you could have something like that, that on the blockchain a record of the fact that you attended, right? You ever hear people and there was, oh, I was at that game. Like maybe there's like the, the stadium could hold 50,000. And then there's like 500,000 people that say they were at a game yeah. or an event, right? And you're like, that's, that's garbage. So on the blockchain, you'd be able to verify. How about this, man? It's worth noting that approximately a trillion dollars worth of ticket stubs have been sold on eBay over the last 25 years. That's so, crazy. Yeah, man, crazy. I mean, it, and it goes so far. What it portends for books being written, you know, with publishers, it's going to be so disruptive. Marriage certificates. Now, even for what, you know, in the rich dad community and what Robert has built, you know, over these years, even think about real estate oh with the gosh. technology, right? Yeah. I mean, so what that portends, I mean, many times when it comes to real estate, too often these databases, they might not have all the information. If something gets messy, you know, you need to go to court, they're going to be looking through the various databases, trying to find information. So how much, you know, the real estate property was paid for, who owns it, all those, you know, those kind of things. We now can go to the blockchain, hopefully in the future. And this, I, I, I sent you an, you know, an article. I don't know if you got a chance to look at it, but we can delve into it in the future of uh, a company. And I think they're based in Ukraine. 
And they're now, and they sold their first house on the blockchain. And it was, I believe in Florida. And I do believe again, this is, you know, I, I'm all in on this. I think you're going to see this, you know, the, the NFTs are going to be utilized in the real estate industry. Wouldn't and cool the records every are going to be house fast, was yeah. turned into an NFT. Like, I believe that's I believe that's what's going to happen. It'll it'll make things so much cheaper transactions. It'll make records faster. Yeah. It'll make things easier to trace. So traceability and transparency. I mean, it's it's huge. How about supply chains? How I mean, you could waste? just go on and on. How about the waste from paper signing like two hundred oh documents gosh. for closing docs. I mean, and just half, everything. Yeah. yeah. No, and that's the people that are at the table, incredible. man. Yeah, you're right. Right, you're at a state closing i'm in new york and there's a lot more uh you know it's 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 a lot harder there's a, there's a lot more regulations and you sit down at a table though and i'm like who's this guy who's she like who are these people that are even here do we really need these individuals so i think we can cut a lot of that out and put money back in the pocket of you know of the people so agreed. again that's all part of this decentralization that i'm so excited about in the space agreed it brings a fair value to everything because there's not a bunch of fluff involved right because it's yeah. efficient it's efficient yeah. and, and full disclosure, the time frog on my profile is mine. I did mint <laughs> it. it. It is in my wallet. So I didn't right click and copy. I just, just wanted to be clear on that. Hey, I got to ask you a question. Do you have a favorite NFT that you're holding right now? Do I have a favorite? The, my favorite NFTs that I'm holding right now are not yet NFTs, but they will be in a future build. So I am more Very on cool. my DeFi nodes. I, I cannot wait for them to be NFTs because to me, that's an amazing yeah. like, future topic we should talk about. Absolutely. Because there's, some, there's some huge crossover in the two industries right now. And yes. It's pretty, pretty incredible. Oh. They don't survive without the other. Uh, absolutely. They're intertwined. Uh, they're definitely, like you said, you really can't have one without the other. And I love how uh, the, the working together and that's all the beauty of this. And again, it's so young. So what we talk about, even like web 3.0 and the blockchain and, you know, people look at it, but it's, it's just emerging. Like, yeah. so what we're going to see in the future is incredible. And, and if you don't mind, can I say something else? Even I think to people out there that look at this and they go, really? Like, wh why would I be into these, again, these pictures? And they look at this yeah. stuff and I go, it's social currency, right? Because at the end of the day, I believe we communicate more with what we purchase than what we actually even say. Oh, I think I so, just brought this up to you, right? Like most people that own BMWs go ahead, don't even man. really like you the did. car. <laughs> oh man, it's all about a status symbol. It is. And, and look on social media, man. Go on, go on Facebook, go on Instagram. And what I like to say is, you know what you see from people? You see their highlight reel. And people put their best foot forward that you never see the, the stuff that's happening behind the scenes. You, the pictures they put, they're edited, you know, and they're cropped. They take all the nonsense out and you see the best of who they are. So it's kind of, I'm like, you're the same way in terms of showing people the vacation you went on, the things that you bought, the things that you wear, we're all flexing to an extent, right? Of who yeah. we are and the image that we, it's Im image impression management. So we want to show people who we really are. And that's what people do on social media. And I would like to say, this is really no different. Why do you think Neymar? Why do you think Eminem? Why do you think Jimmy Fallon? All these people are buying board apes and crypto punks yep. because they can flex and say there's scarcity to this. Yep. Look what I have and look what you don't. But we do the same thing, man. It's the, the brands we support, the clothes that we wear, the artists we support. That's it's the same thing. So it's really social currency. And I want and it's people awesome to because see it's that. flexing crypto now, right? Yeah, because I love crypto it, is a place like NFT wouldn't be the like most used word of the year, right? If it wasn't the thing. Well right? said. Everybody well wants said, to be part right? of the thing. Like so, that brings up a good point. I wanted to ask you about this because this is. This is the transition that, that's sort of happening where NFT started with traditional like art and artsy stuff. And now it's like it's sort of transitioning into something different. And like I was hoping you could sort of explain what that landscape looks like. It's not just pictures anymore is what I'm saying. Right. It's, yes, it's more than that. Yeah, that's and, and that's kind of what I'm alluding to, especially like the disruption that you're going to see. And we're just starting to see, like I brought up in the music industry, um, you know, you're going to see a lot more artists that are jumping on the bandwagon that are selling. Let me just explain that one a little bit. So people go, I can go and why am I going to buy an NFT of a song that I like from maybe one of my favorite artists? 
they, you know, they'll say, I can just go to Spotify and listen to the music for free. But here's the great part. Ready, Rob? And this is why I'm excited. And this is why the audience should be excited. Because the great part of this is that there is going to be utility with like a music NFT that now the artist can say, all right, you buy this NFT and I'm going to give you, say, uh, I don't know, I'm going to give you front row seats to some of my future concerts. I'm going to give you physical items. I'm going to give you signed memorabilia from me if you have this. And also maybe give you a tiny slice of all the royalties that come in. So it brings a connection between the artist and their audience in a manner in which we have not seen before. That's why it's so disruptive. Yeah, it's much bigger than the pictures. It's everything that we're talking about. Almost every facet of society. This is going to invade everything NFTs. So yeah, people may erroneously look at this now and go, oh, it's just pictures or you know, digital pictures or images. I don't really care about any of that. And I wanna say, no, just wait and see and watch how transformative all of this stuff is in every facet of society. That's amazing. It just shows you the speed at which yeah. technology evolves. And it's, yeah, can I? Yeah, yeah go, go ahead. For it. Yeah, no, no, no go I, ahead. I, that, that's I, all I, I was just going to say, so I'm, I'm, we're talking about this, and I just want to make sure the audience, too, is uh, cognizant of even when we say blockchain. And I think sometimes we hear that word, and a lot of these words just get thrown around, and sometimes a lot of them are cheap. Like when we start talking about like what a metaverse is, you know, even with Zuckerberg changing the name of Facebook to Meta. And I believe it's important in trying to educate people, even what blockchain means and, and non-fungible token. So a token means, again, it can be verified on a blockchain. And just to make sure everybody's on the same page, a blockchain is, again, just a digitally distributed, decentralized public ledger that exists across a network. All right. So it's important, I think, for the audience. And it's almost like if I can even just go a little bit deeper with this to understand what a blockchain is, I want people to think of like a physical chain. So if I was holding a physical chain, the chain would be one piece. Right. And it's connected and it can be traced together. So everything that happens on the blockchain will sync and talk to one another. So it, it, the blockchain is essentially like the foundation and NFTs themselves they attach to the blockchain, which means that if somebody purchases an NFT on the blockchain, it can be verified because everything is linked together. So it, it, to me, that's just really wild. And it, it, the blockchain kind of fulfills the same thing like that the banks, what they're doing. But yeah. instead of doing it privately, like in my bank account or your bank account, right? All of the transactions are actually recorded publicly on the internet. So it, it, it's just a wild time, man. I, I see, it, you know, I see a, a term sort of dying because of the blockchain. It's cooking the books. That's ah, good. I, love it. I love it, man. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a good point because you can see everything now and that's yep. going to be hard. All these stories and, and, and listen, this, the, the impetus or the genesis of this is going back to uh, Satoshi in 2008, Nakamoto, right? And, and right. Who, is, who is that? Is it Robert, right? Or, <laughs> you know, we don't know who it is. But, who is it? Uh, yeah, so who's the person that really, the originator, the brilliant mind that wasn't myopic, but was looking in the future and saw something, saw something special, a decentralized system to eliminate a lot of the waste and exactly what you said, to hide a lot of the manipulation and then the corruption that really takes place and to create a decentralized system, like you said before with DeFi, that people would have opportunities to get yields that you could never get. Look, cash is debasing at like 12 to 15% per year, right? Mm -hmm. So what, you, what are you going to do? Leave cash in a safe or put it in a savings account? I mean, no, it just okay. doesn't, right? It doesn't really make any sense. And that's the beauty of the program here at Rich Dad because yes. there's a plethora of information for years for people to be educated on what to do with their money in a smart way. Yes, and not overlook opportunities. I mean, that's Rich yeah, Dad's man. about looking in the nook and crannies for opportunities. That's what Satoshi did. He saw a problem that other people didn't saw, see, and he saw a way to solve it. And I think yeah. it's been awesome. So after going through all of that, I am yeah. personally, I'm really, I'm really, really interested. Are there any like NFT oh, projects glad. that are yes. coming up? Hey, would you mind if I share my, at? yeah. Would you mind if I share my screen for people Not so they can see? Yeah, all right, cool. So let me do that. Yep. Let me share my screen. Okay. All right. So people should be able to see it in a second. 
All right, so you can see that there, right? Okay. Yeah. So and remember, there's going to be an audio only version of this, uh, most likely. So we'll have to describe a little of this more in detail. Wow, that's yes. Really cool. Yeah, so here, here's the, there are a few projects that I just want to highlight for, for the audience that I have my eye on. Now, remember, none of this is financial advice. So everything we do on this program, everybody has to make their own financial decisions and you have to be informed. But I just wanted to bring up a few projects very briefly that I think people should go look at. And the first one, this NFT project that's really cool is called Clementine's Nightmare. Uh, I've been in contact with the team too, and super excited about, I think, what they're bringing here to the space. First of all, just look at the art. I mean, the art is incredible. It's this is beautiful. a right, it's beautiful. It's super slick. So on the blockchain and, and they're, they're developing a, a play to earn game that's going to go with this. The NFT drop is going to be coming in a few weeks, a few short weeks. And uh, the game will be coming after that. Why I really like the, the team and the project uh, is because they're taking their time and they're, they're not going to roll the game out until everything is done well. And I'm a believer in, in quality over quantity. So I don't get behind any project or I'll never mention anything where I don't see a team that has really a lot of expertise, a lot of experience. Uh, but this is a project that looks really cool. And the whole premise of this uh, game that's coming out is this character Clementine. And she you're, you're getting a bird's eye look into her dreams and her nightmares look look at this rob are you kidding me i mean so, it reminds me of like one of my daughter's favorite shows uh, like Coraline. it sort oh, of has the yes. same art form yes. and i love that show so yeah yeah man so really i even show, i showed my 12 year old i'm like this is cool you can see some of the characters here that are coming out and when we mint we talked about earlier minting nfts so you can mint some of these characters uh when they do drop this project so this is one I think should be on everyone's radar. I'll just put up two. This is their Twitter page. Uh, you can check it out. They have, you know, just about 67,000 followers and uh, ramping up, you know, for their NFT launch. So hey, this can, is this is can one. Can you that's go back to cool. the website really quick? Yeah, one, yeah, one, sure. Absolutely. One, one really important thing, I, so. I mean, from an educational standpoint, and, and Jim go said ahead. this is not financial advice at all. One thing I highly recommend that I found has been very fruitful for me is get involved in the community. You see the community yeah. tab at the top, join their discord, ask questions. Absolutely. Like Absolutely. This, these communities typically are very welcoming. They love when people come in and they want mm -hmm. to just talk about what they're trying to develop. And it, it, it's a really fun place to be and it's a great learning environment. So I just wanted to put that out there. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because listen, for me, as, I, as somebody that lives in this space, I'm always on, I'm on Discord, I'm on Telegram, I'm on, I'm on Discord more and jump into servers, get to know people, get connected. So I, I, I'm in New York, man, but a lot of my friends are in places like Australia, other places, you know, in London. So you name it across the world. That's the beauty of all of this. And, and of course the internet, right? How interconnected everything is. That, but at the end of the day, decent, I love how everything is decentralized. So finance, and, uh, you name it, all of this, that we can stay connected and follow these projects together and learn from each other. You know, Rob, I have, a, I, I believe in a motto and I, you know, I use this with people that I teach privately. And you know everybody that I know in my world, I tell them I have an L on my chest for the rest of my life for learner, and the L stands for learner. Yes. And I always want to continue learning in the space. The day that you think you have everything figured out, you should be worried. So th this space is constantly moving, evolving, and changing. And that's just another reason I love it because yes. you, you see the new stuff, right? And it's 365, it's 24 seven. Not like the traditional stock market, man. You can always jump in, you can make trades, you can get involved and mint NFTs. So that's kind of cool. And uh, here's another exciting. project. Go ahead, bro. It's always exciting. You know, I yeah. just realized that there is a lot of synergy, a lot more synergy with uh, between the beliefs of Rich Dad and crypto because Rich 100%. Dad is highly, highly, highly in big belief of community. People teaching people is one of our mantras, right? Well, yes. if you look at crypto, you do not have a project without a community. These are all great community point. driven. And the people in it that are interested are great. There's some people that aren't or that are upset and you'll see them as well, but everything right. works out. It's just, it's a beautiful place to be. And I just wanted to like bring that up because I think it's really important. 
Yeah, it is. And, you know, I see so many voices. And if I could just say that, it's, it's hard to value a lot of the voices, especially in the crypto space, because you see a lot of people shilling projects or people are getting paid to promote certain projects. And we don't do any of that here no. on, on the Rich Dad program. We're, we're the antithesis of that. So there's a lot, there's character and integrity in a program, in a company that has been around for this long, the longevity. And that speaks to Robert and that speaks to the vision of the whole team here. And, and again, that's why, I, you know, I love being a part of this because I see all that. Uh, and it's, it goes from top to bottom. It's, it's through the whole organization. Yep. It's great. Can I, can I focus on another one? Absolutely. All right. So Here's another one and, and a team. I, I was just talking to, the, I talked to the founder actually recently of this. This is Collider Craftworks. And this is another uh, NFT that should be dropping. Uh, they haven't given us an exact date. Uh, you know, I'm guessing. So it says early 22. Look at this. Look at the art of this. This is amazing. dope. This is complete fire. I mean, this, this is slick. This is really cool. They're very innovative with a lot of the things that they're doing. So look at this, ready? Let me just give you a little background on the team. So I believe they have, I'm trying to remember exactly how many, uh, they have eight, all right. So they have 84 people that are part of their team. And they're Holy based cow. in, yeah, they're based in Argentina. So they said, look, we're the new kids on the block. We're excited to be here. If you played Mortal Kombat, Assassin's Creed, or Injustice 2, then you played with some of the characters we developed. Their reputation precedes them. This is the first drop that they're going to have. They're going to have multiple, but th this is a team. This is a, yeah, I want to, you know, I, I just, I love, again, none of this is financial advice, but I think this is a project that should be on your radar. They're developing, and you got to look at this, and we could talk about this even oh, off wow. air. You and I, they have a visual wallet that they're creating, and oh. I don't want to go too deep into this, but it's, it looks really cool. And what, what this it looks portends. very much like an Adidas logo, and absolutely, man. <laughs> hey, so they're uh, you know, flashing some branding already. Yeah. I see that, which is kind of cool that you bring that up because I hope everyone sees. Just look in the past week with announcements from Apple and Nike. Adidas has already jumped in. You see Gucci and all these, you know, yeah. Dolce Gabbana, all these big companies, fashion companies. There's going to be a marriage, and this is a. So th here's another. If I could click on. As the screen comes one, down here. Before you leave this one yeah, really yeah. quick, is this I'm gonna put a, up the Twitter. Is this a play to earn game as well? Or is this no, this is just an NFT, NFT drop play. right? Yeah, for right now it is. So okay. I'm really just highlighting the NFT play. But down the road, they have much bigger plans. And uh, I'm quite excited about the possibility of maybe even getting an interview with one of the founders on this. It would be, you know, it would be kind of cool. Uh, Rob, if we could actually bring on people from some of these projects that I talk to. Uh, to maybe educate people on on the whole space, not just talk about their project, but educate people on all of this, on NFTs, metaverse plays, and just crypto at large, giving them a macro view of where we're at and where they think things are really headed. I think that would be kind of neat too. I do too. You know, it's funny. It's like uh, once, once everyone that's listening starts getting into Discord, you'll learn an acronym AMA, Ask Me Anything. Yeah, you sort of like a little AMA with, you know, some of the founders of these really neat new projects, just because I think it's great to listen to them because they really yes. tell you what they see in this technology, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. It's not even about pitching their stuff. I want to hear what these guys, what's your, what's your vision? What are you trying to make better? You know what I mean? And I think that would be great. And if, and the last thing I'll say, and, and, and just, you can tie things up with a bow the last thing I'll say, because it, it, it ties in with that perfectly, that, and this is a project where I've, I've been on a couple of AMAs. If I had one of the, and just some of the conversations I've had, this is the last one I'm going to mention, and I want to highlight this one, maybe even next week, talk about it in a little more detail. Look at how many followers Antonym has. That's this incredible. is, they have, it's incredible, man. And this is, this is organic. This is no marketing. This is a community. Their Discord was closed, so it's hard to get in. But it's a neat place, man. And th this is called the House of Fidgetal. And the reason why I'm bringing this one up, I, I didn't know if I was, I was on the fence, but you, what you said kind of spurred something on in me because they're calling this the House of Fidgetal. And the House of Fidgetal kind of just means it's a marriage of the physical and the digital worlds together. Yes. To, to, to keep it really simple that, and I can't say, I know some things about the project that I'm not allowed to divulge yet, that I know they're going to divulge. 
but I think this is going to be one of the biggest projects to launch in 22. The art is absolutely incredible, what they're doing, the team that's behind it. So it, even down the road, I'd like to, I always teach people that, you know, I like, I believe I'm a visual learner too, right? And a lot of yeah. people are multi-sensory, but that's the world we live in. And I believe in teaching people, even I, I like to use acronyms. So I teach people like, and I use farm and I say, all right, you need to know who the founder is, you know, they have to have somebody that is, is a name in the space and you, then you, A, you have to look at the art yep. and then R, you have to look at the roadmap and then M, the blockchain metrics. And then lastly, I add the C on there for community, what you said before. Yes. But this is another this is another really good project, never financial advice from us, but something that people um, they, they should they should probably uh, keep an eye on. It's just an interesting space. It's yeah, it's, man. It's Abs hard to wrap yeah. your head around. Abs the best yeah, thing absolutely. I can say is get involved, like spend an hour get in involved. discord, jump in one discord channel, ask a couple of questions. You'll find out it's a little bit addicting and it's way better, in my opinion, than Twitter or Facebook. You're learning. I think. I think one of the most important things for all the listeners out there is you can, you need to spend some time and learn about web 3.0 blockchain technology and NFTs. That's one of the best things you can do. It's one of the best gifts you can give to yourself and you can give to your loved ones. And that's something that we're excited about, uh, you know, in the rich dad, poor dad family, that we're going to be bringing this to you. A lot of content that we believe is incredibly valuable to your life and where we believe society is heading. Plus you could just, you know, tune in. We're going to kick up a new yeah, show. Man. You can That's just it. come listen to us and Absolutely. we'll explain things as we go along this. We're learning just like everybody else, because this is a yes, brand sir. new fun yep. space. Yeah. And it's just a good time. Just have fun and learn, you know? Yeah. Well, and listen, it was a pleasure being on here today, and I'm looking forward to uh, more of these conversations that we can dialogue and, you know, educate the audience and show them just the beauty of, of what's happening all around them. Yeah, me too, Jim. It was a good time. I, yeah. I always love talking to you, man. You have yeah, you're, man. You're very here. insightful. I love your information. Right, thanks, brother. And I love the, convul the convergence in our, our, uh, our sort of uh, investing interest. Yes, sir. So this is going to be fun. I cannot wait. Yeah. All right, Jim. All right. I'll talk to you All later. Right. Be well. All right. You as Sounds well. good. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.